Let's review the integration between MailChimp and Follow-Up Boss. So I'm gonna cover some high level things and then get a little bit into some tactics of actually creating uh, a campaign and a template in MailChimp, but I wanna cover the interaction between the two systems more so up front. So one question people ask all the time is, um, mail, the MailChimp um, Follow-Up Boss true integration does require you to map all of your contacts in Follow-Up Boss to MailChimp because MailChimp is billed by the number of contacts you have in there. A lot of times people ask about trying to only co uh, connect some specific contacts or specific groups. Unfortunately, there's no good way to do that. You can do it with Zapier, but you do miss a lot of the key function of the integration, largely which is pushing the clicks, uh, opens and unsubscribes that happen in MailChimp back into follow-up boss as well as any updates in follow boss continuously push into MailChimp. So as you add new contacts or new leads come in, they're going to be added to MailChimp automatically. Uh, I'm going to go over some of this in a little bit, but as far as being really consistent, the true integration is the way to go. I know it can be a little more expensive to set them up that way, but ultimately I think it's, uh, it's really valuable. Uh, to use the true integration. So to set it up, it's really simple. You would just come here and follow up boss to admin integrations. If you click here, I've already got it set up and integrated, but if you click here, um, the description gives you a little more intel around how to do it. Under settings, basically you, this walks you through it. You find the API key, you paste it in. You do need to have an audience already created in your MailChimp. And another quick important note, you can still have a free MailChimp account up to 2000 contacts. So if you're below 2000 um, contacts right now, just try it out for free. Um, it'll still work the same, but you will need to create or map this to a certain audience in Follow Up Boss. I also try um, to be real specific in naming it. So I typically name it like Follow Up Boss Sync List. So it's really clear what it is. But once you do that, um, you just hit save here after you paste in the API key and you're good to go. The systems are connected. So like I mentioned, the, one of the best things about this is that so much of the data here, uh, I'm here in a demo account, but so much of the data here in Follow-Up Boss pushes over to MailChimp. So if I go here um, into my audience and look at my contacts, we've got first name, last name, phone numbers, birthday, if you've got that in the system, all the tags are here, subscribed or unsubscribed, the source, the date they were added, um, even a contact rating, which is only really based on uh, prior email activity. So you probably won't see much there if you haven't used the system yet. But one of the best things about this is you can target people by just about any criteria you can find in follow -up. So if you want to say, hey, send this only to my closed stage, you can easily do that. If you say, hey, send only to this specific tag, you can do that. If you want to say, hey, don't send to this stage or this tag, you can do all of that. It's a really powerful tool in that sense. It also, of course, allows for a more beautiful HTML style newsletter type thing. So I really recommend using MailChimp for things like newsletters or when you want more uh, attractive styling. Follow-up boss batch emails are great for quick emails or things like action plans for a short follow-up for converting leads. I think MailChimp is really powerful for a newsletter. I work with a lot of people that do weekly newsletters uh, and have really great returns uh, from sending consistent uh, content out to people. So one of the easiest ways, there are different ways of doing this now, but one of the ways I like to do this is you can build segments. And so in this segment, which is here under audience and MailChimp, you can basically say, hey, I'm going to create a segment. And what I want to do is, you know, I want to send out to any contacts that are assigned. Um, let's just do this. Let's just say the contacts assigned to this lender, we don't want to email, but we do want to email all the contacts that are assigned to the other agents in our follow-up boss. So I can say agent is not... Larry Linder. And in addition to that, I could also say, or, or I could do any or all. So I want to do all, I could say 
people that are not assigned to Linda or Larry and have certain things, or I can go back to any and it'll say, or, so in this case, I could say something like, um, where is tag? Oh, right at the very top. So I could say tags, you know, contact is, is tagged. Great example of what we do internally for our company, we power this by a tag. So if people have the AS email, email list tag, they're on our email. If they don't have it, they're not. It's very, very simple. What I see a lot of teams and brokerages do is usually just exclude either a tag or a stage, but still email the whole database. But you can do anything you want because all that data is in here. So I could select, you know, hey, I want to do this, but I want to send it not to people connected to Larry Linder and also not people tagged uh, seller. So I'll say contact is not tagged seller. Again, this is a demo account, so I'm probably not going to, may not have anybody there. I actually have a bunch of people, all the people, none of them are assigned to Larry and have the tag seller. But if this segment is what you want it to be, you hit save segment. I'm just going to call it test segment. I can show you how we use this here in just a little bit. So that is saved. The cool thing about this segment, it's going to continue to update. So when we add people to follow up boss, they're going to push into MailChimp. And as long as they're not assigned to Larry Lender or they don't have the tag seller, they're going to be in this segment, even if they just were added to the database yesterday. So the cool thing is now I go here in MailChimp to campaigns. Again, this is a brand new setup on a demo account. So I want to create a campaign. Um, typically recommend just going with email. There's some great templates in here, or you can start from zero. But MailChimp basically walks you through this. So I'm going to call this a test campaign. And then this two field here is where I'm going to select that segment. So you can send it to everybody in your database, but most likely you guys are going to have somebody you want to exclude, whether it's other agents, um, or you may just want to send only the contacts assigned to you as an agent. Uh, but this is where you hit edit recipients and you pick the audience and or the tag. So in this case, or, or uh, so in this case, I'm going to pick the segment that I just made test segment. And so now that that segment that I just created are the only people that are going to get this. You can control who it comes from. So if you want to send it from like an info at or a client care, you can edit that. You can edit the subject as well as a little preview line, which is very handy. Helps people open it if they can see a quick preview of what it is. And then design email. So you can use the classic builder or they have a new one. I'm going to go with classic because I know that one a lot better. And they also have all these templates. So you can just select one of these. You can still fully modify these once you implement, but it's a true drag and drop system. So like, this is great. You can pop in a new picture there. You could also say, Hey, I want to add an, another box or I want to add a button. You just drag it over. And then say, you know, search all listings. And then just drop in a URL to your website search page. And now there's going to be a button in your, um, in your newsletter that takes people right to that part of your website. So if you're using Pixel, another powerful tool driving people back to your website so they can engage, Pixel will show... Uh, hopefully you have some smart list tied to activity. So it'll show in your follow-up boss that this email did indeed drive people back to your website. Now it's giving us more intel on what they're doing uh, there on the site. So you can pop in your logo, really easy to build um, either from scratch or based on their templates. You'll want to come in here and pop in um, your social links. You can edit these. It's very, very easy to do. Um, you can, you know, pick different types, remove types, add links to your website or whatever social platforms you use or focus on. This part down here in the footer is going to be filled out automatically based on your profile in MailChimp. So it will add your business address, some things like that, that are important for spam compliance. So make sure you do that. When you're done with this, you can hit continue. It'll save all your changes. One other best practice I like to recommend to people, send yourself a test email, click through the links, see how the sizing works, 
Another great thing about MailChimp, if you put in an image that's too large, it typically prompts you to correct it. And it's really easy to correct it within MailChimp instead of having to edit the initial file. You can edit it within MailChimp to make sure it still looks good, but it's not so big that it affects deliverability or just the prettiness of the layout of your email. So now that we've got this campaign, if we were done with this, we could schedule it here uh, or send it. If I had added uh, the subject and who it's from, these buttons would be lit up and you could either select to schedule it for a time in the future or send it right now. So one of the other cool things is once you get this info down, you're probably gonna want it to be consistent every time. So what I do is come in here in campaigns, once you've sent this campaign, or, or you could do it now, but once you've sent it, you can still come here and hit replicate. And the cool thing about that is it's gonna replicate the entire email, the audience, who it's from, the subject line, the content. And then what most people do is just go in and edit a few pieces of that. They're not reformatting or redoing the email template every time. They're just popping in maybe a new blog post or a new, you know, things to do in Atlanta or an interesting article about home ownership um, or something to that effect. If you're recruiting, you know, another great thing is to put a little button in, hey, we're looking for, for good people. We're always looking for good agents. Um, you can put all these things in here um, as well as obviously good calls to action, trying to get people to reply or otherwise engage with your email. So it's pretty straight ahead. And again, the clicks and opens all push back into follow up boss. So if I had sent out to these people, and this person opened it, you actually see an open here, just like you would for uh, a follow boss email. You'll see that it was opened, that there were clicks, or if the person unsubscribes. You don't have to try to manage to list if they unsubscribe in MailChimp, it'll mark them uh, unsubscribed here as well, as well as add the tag uh, unsubscribe. So these are kind of high level things on setting it up. I'm not gonna get too deep into building the campaigns or anything to that effect. But um, I did want to cover that all here at a high level. So um, a couple of best practices. The first time you do this, if you have a large database, I would definitely recommend sending out just to past clients or sphere or some smaller group. Uh, it will affect your reputation score. If you send out a 10,000 person email two days after you open up a brand new MailChimp account, um, MailChimp, like Follow Boss, takes spamming and all those things very seriously. So I would definitely recommend starting small, sending to a small list of people that are probably going to open and engage with that email is a great way to get things going. But uh, definitely recommend, you know, working with a smaller audience at first, just again, to get things going, to see how it works. Nothing worse than making a mistake and blasting it out to 14,000 people and getting a bunch of responses that say, hey, the link doesn't work or this came in weird or I can't see this image or, or whatever. So certainly testing it with a smaller group uh, is a great way to go. But this is a really powerful integration. Um, one of the downsides that does not currently work and I have a, a minor workaround I can share, the spouses or relationships feature in Follow Up Boss currently does not map to MailChimp. So if you have spouses here, unfortunately, the best workaround is actually to export these spouses in Follow Boss and upload them to a separate audience in MailChimp. I know that's not a really sexy workaround, but it is a way that you can message both parties. You would technically have to replicate this campaign. I don't believe you can send to two audiences. Um, so you would actually replicate this campaign identically and just send it to the audience that you should name something like relationships and follow boss or something really clear to that effect. But that's probably the only downside to the integration is that currently relationships uh, just don't map over to MailChimp, but there are workarounds for that. And um, they certainly can do the trick for now. So again, I'm a huge fan of this integration. Happy to show you guys some of the overarching things as well as how to actually create a template and, and move forward. But uh, it's a really powerful integration. I think email marketing is still one of the best tools you can use as well as sending out interesting information to people to stay top of mind. So I hope that helps. 
you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them and we'd be happy to uh, answer them or hear cool ways that you're using this integration.